big players are very mobile. And you heard Craig talk with Gary Payton about leadership. The key there is vocal <laughs> leadership with Gary Payton. And here's another thing with the with the pressure defense. You can see the other night against Canada, 16 steals for 27 points. That's their calling card here uh, to win the gold medal as they move towards Sydney. Alonzo Morning easily winning the opening tip. And again, an international play, just two officials talking to Eddie F. Rush and Joe DeRose, who blows the whistle and calls a foul on Ken Johnson. Uh, that's an adjustment for those guys because they're used to three in the NBA, and it's not easy with the physical play and international ball. Well, and also, too, one thing about the select team, Mike, when we watch them practice, they're not really a big team. You see them get beat real on a quick inbound pass, so Zoe catches the ball twice in the lane and gets fouled. He'll go to the free throw line, and Ken Johnson really is their only big man. He's the leading shot blocker in the NCAA. That's his second foul. You only get five, so now the... Uh, United States select coaches Mike Jarvis and, and Bob Huggins from Cincinnati are probably going to have to go to the bench. So morning will go to the line as the Buckeye Kenny Johnson, who is a terrific shot blocker, as mentioned. We'll have to be careful a little bit. Morning has become one of the tri captains for this team, along with Peyton and Jason Kidd. You know, Mike, I could see Rudy as this, you know, the Olympics, you know, get here in full swing is maybe Zoe being a guy that starts in the middle most every game and maybe rotating the four other guys because really he is the power guy that gives them that presence inside more than the other big people. Lonzo Morning in just tremendous shape. Here's Joe Forte. Uh, Tar Heel rushed the shot. You'll see a lot of that early. The pace is very difficult for the college players. Kid to Morning deflected out of bounds by Battier. But as you said earlier, Doug, it was so much fun to watch the first day of the college all-star scrimmage. There was some awe there. There were some struggles, but they just every day got a little bit better as Hardaway puts it in. Well, the first quarter of the first scrimmage, they didn't score a basket to select team. They were shut out. And then as the week went along, actually had a chance to win one of the quarters. So you could see them getting more confident and comfortable. A little bit of the awe was left out of the game after that. That's Richardson. The Michigan State product who nails the three. He's been very confident. First won a national championship with the Spartans. And look for him to play a huge role at Michigan State this year with their graduations. Tim Hardaway hits the three, which again from international distance is 20 feet, 6 inches. And Hardaway, five of the seven points for the United States. Jason Williams, morning the rebound. Kid on the jumper. But see the transition defense. Those are wide open shots. And that's the thing that college players struggle with because in many instances there's a continuity offensive pattern. And they're not used to having their guards back to protect against that. You have got to get back. Battier gets inside and gets it knocked away. Right back. Shot won't go. Hard away the rebound. The United States with their 12 deep roster will look to run and run and run. Scramble for the floor. They turn it over. Three on one the other way. Nice feed from Williams, but Kidd got back and got a piece of the shot. Nick gets the moves from the crowd. McDice inside. And McDice is fouled. He will shoot a few. It always happens. You make a great play on one end and you don't convert, and it seems like you always try to get back and you just can't. We saw that the other night when Raheem was able to uh, finish off an easy play after a missed dunk by one of the Canadian players here at McDice now getting to the line. You've got to convert on those fast break opportunities, Mike. McDice has been kidded quite a bit by his USA teammates <laughs> on how quiet he is. They say he said about four words all week. He's one of the most unassuming, nicest young men in the NBA. They call him him <laughs> because he really has no identity. He has, hasn't said a word, but he's enjoying every minute of the ribbon. They get the offensive rebound. You could tell the United States the other night against Canada just thrilled to be involved in a game against competition rather than battling each other. This morning, this is a tough shot. Richardson the board. Carter on the steal. Long three. Puts it in. Vince Carter, who hit four three-pointers the other night. He, he was so impressive the other night. Maybe we saw about 29 points in 19 minutes on nine shots. He's 11 of 12 from the line, four of six from the three-point line. So now five of seven here early as they're working themselves to get ready for the Olympics. So he's shooting it very well right now. And not forcing it. It's all coming in the flow, although that was a long-range three-pointer. Johnson, a quick turnaround. Kid the rebound and quickly off to the races. 
That time the college kids get back. Morning lost the dribble. Forte and Williams. Nice feed back to Richardson. Some flash of their own. This Joseph Forte really impressed me, uh, Michael. When we were watching practices, he doesn't do anything spectacular. Now, that was a great pass, but he's very smooth, all like a Ray Allen or an Allen Houston. I think a little bit better ball handler than those two guys early in their careers. A very intelligent young player as Morning misfires from outside. Richardson the rebound. Well, this guy, this Jason Richardson, has got some energy and toughness. And then get caught up in the uh, shake and bake stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it gets a little bit early. Battier. It's a wide open jumper. And Jason Williams knocks it down. The two Duke guys putting a smile on Mike Krzyzewski's face. The Duke coaches in attendance. And the college select team hanging tough early. Carter, that quick first step, lost it. Morning picks it up. Try to force it in there. Muscles it back. And draws the foul. So Morning will go back to the free throw line. But the select team playing well. Yes, they are. And again, they're in, in a nice rhythm. The loose ball, Joseph Forte picked it up. A great fast break. Going to take the ball behind his back. And then the over-the-shoulder pass, Jason Richardson with a beautiful finish. So getting out and running at the opportunity. And uh, Joseph Forte will have a seat along with Ken Johnson, who did pick up two early fouls. And just picked up his third on that last play. So Steve Smith comes in, and Jason Kidd sits down. You know, Mike, what we saw the other night against Canada, and it's something that we need to point out, probably it's, it's the United States strategy. It's going to be probably the first six or seven minutes of the game. Teams are going to stay close, and what they want to do is they want to wear you down with the pressure defense. We saw it the other night, one-point lead after seven minutes, and they went on a 16-0 run. They're going to be a team of surges. And just one good player after another. And you say, in fact, one great player after another that comes at you. So both teams making some substitutions now. Long range jumper from Jason Richardson. The boy is off to an excellent start. He's got eight points, three of three from the field. Got deflected out of bounds, and we'll have our first time out. So the United States Olympic team, once again, their defense making a difference. Well, Vince Carter comes from behind. He squares up a deep three. That's behind the NBA three point line. He buries it. The United States leads by three. Here in Honolulu on the island of Oahu, the United States leading by three. 26-year-old Antonio McDice was asked to play for the Olympic team for the injured Tim Duncan, and he was humbled by the selection. This is a great honor to be an Olympian. I mean, it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, especially for me. I mean, I've never been put in a situation like this, and, and you know, just being here, it's, it's a big thrill for me. I, um, it, it's it's a, a touching touching feeling and, and you know just representing that red white and blue I mean what more can you ask for Mike the thing I like about the selection of these some of these young players you don't get a chance to see Antonio McDice a lot of Sharif Abdul Rahim some of these younger players we have some great young players in the NBA this is a chance for the United States to be able to see these guys before they get back into their NBA season yeah, McDice certainly grew up in a Rural part of Mississippi. Quitman, Mississippi. Now he's on the United States Olympic team as Tim Hardaway misses Carter right back. Wow. But look out there how small this select team is. You know, we talked about the size once Ken Johnson went out with fouls. But look, Michael Wright, they list him at 6'8. He does have long arms. He's about 6'7. He and uh, Shane Battier are on the front line right now, so they have a very small team. They've got to get all five guys on the board. They must rebound. Carter on the free throw. Rudy Tomjanovich coaching hard here in the second game. Down right there. We gotta hit the boards, guys. Yeah. Nice. These nice. kids are game now. Man, they're one shot break, man. We gotta nice. hit the boards. <laughs> <laughs> they are game and they have game for certain. <laughs> Williams calls out the play. Williams just finished his just one year at Duke. Only gonna be a sophomore. It's amazing the poise he has for such a young player. I really like, too, he's strong. He's got a powerful body. He can get in the lane, get bumped, and still get his shot. Battier slips and loses the handle. College kids get back on defense. By the way, nice feed for Morning. And the Miami Heat player is working well together. But you can see the big men running the floor. That's your center finishing on the break after a turnover. Hardaway playing very well. Here's Hardaway earlier this week. Sounded off a little bit about 
not being signed. He's a free agent right now, wants to return to Miami, but does not have a contract yet. Well, Miami really needs him to come back and be healthy with all the changes on that team. They don't want to have to bring a new point guard in, and I do know they have Anthony Carter, but they need Hardaway to be healthy and play well if they want to win the East. McDice falls short, goes right back. And the second effort from Antonio McDice. Those second shots will just break your heart. You can play good initial defense, but defense does not stop until you get possession of the ball. Lead back up to eight for the Olympic team. Just over five and a half gone by. Battier Spake, McDice stays right with him now. Jason Williams. On the follow. There he goes again, Jason Richardson. He really caught our eye. Mike, you and I were sitting at the practices the other day, and we looked at each other. And you know what? We talked to Gary Payton. That was the guy he probably gave more grief to all week long. And we asked him, who was his favorite player? And he said, Jason Richardson. He reminds me of myself. <laughs> Offensive foul on Carter as Battier picks up the charge. Every scrimmage they had, Payton was really getting on him. But in a nice initiation type way. And as you see him come in there with the follow. It's, a, it's scary. This young guy only averaged five points a game from Michigan State. Now, they had a very veteran team, so you expect him to really step up and have a great year. But the timing, the explosiveness, the energy, and he's having some fun. What was impressive about him, Doug, in college All-America came in as a freshman and just fit in as a role, which sometimes is not easy for the high school stars, and he helped them win a championship. Pass goes through the hands of... Terrence Morris, Tinsley gets it back out. Morris, the Maryland star, off the mark. Ball knocked loose. Kidd with the save. Michael Wright from Arizona has come in as well for the select team. Morning inside. There's Alonzo Morning again, just running the floor. Now in Miami, that's what he does. Pat Riley runs his offense. He says, on the break, run right to the front of the rim and post up, and we'll try to get you a little quick basket. You've seen two in a row now by Zoe. Bradford hits the three. Morning. Look at Morning running the floor down ahead of everyone else, but couldn't control it. Richardson comes up with the ball. Bradford misses that three. Kid, maybe the best rebounding point guard we've ever seen, or certainly in the NBA in the last couple of years. Here comes Richardson. Kid in pursuit. Make sure. Oh, he puts it in. <laughs> he wanted to make sure it wasn't a spectacular dunk. But he comes up with a circus shot. And a million-dollar smile on the face of Jason Richardson. Jason Kidd really hustled back into the play. But you see the upper body strength. A lot of young guys. Now, this guy's just going to be a sophomore. But he's able to concentrate, throw the ball up over his shoulder, and his teammates love it. You can see the smiles and the energy. They are having fun. And, you know, Mike, I remember when I was an Olympian. That was a little different than as an Olympian. I was a college player in 72. And we went around and played NBA teams to get ready to go over to Munich. And when you got an opportunity, I played against Dr. J and some of these guys. What a thrill to find out where you fit in and what you had to do to make it in this league. Kid, meanwhile, throws it away. And he is taking full advantage. He's got 12 of the, actually 13 of the 19 points. Remember, he came off the bench at Michigan State. He wasn't a starter a couple of games, maybe. I think he started three games all the whole season. Troy Murphy from Notre Dame has come in. The Olympic squad right now is Jason Kidd, Carter, Morning, McDice, and Steve Smith. That's Tinsley, the Iowa State product. Shot clock down to seven. Long three. Too far out for Richardson. Williams blocked by Morning. That's the learning process. He can make that play in college, not against Zoe. McDice running the floor, draws the foul. Jason Kidd waiting patiently, gets him the pass. And Antonio McDice. We'll shoot a couple. Well, it's just over eight minutes gone by here in the first. Jason Richardson, as he goes hard to the basket, the good concentration, the finish up over the shoulder. He's off to a great start, and they're within two at the 12-minute mark. They had a 20-minute scrimmage, as you see. Montrose, the big guy in the middle, and those players. They had a 20-minute scrimmage against the original Dream Team, and yes, they actually beat them. It was a shock to everybody. Alan Houston, who was on that select team, remembers it quite well. I just remember the buzzer going off, and it was real quiet. <laughs> and so we were just kind of looking around, like, you know, what, what now? <laughs> you know, we, we knew for sure that he was going to put some more time on the clock. And, uh, but, you know, the next day, you don't hear the end of the story. Like my man Casey Kasem or whatever, he said, this, this is the rest of the story. Nobody tells about the rest of the story when we came back the next two or three days. And, 
we were like Angola or somebody got beat by 40. <laughs> <laughs> he took full advantage, but the college kids made their statement, and they're doing a good job here today. And, and see, that's the great thing. You look at that developmental team. Those guys were able to go back after that experience and say, you know what, we're great college players, but if we're going to play with Michael Jordan and Magic Johnson and Larry Bird and Drexler and Pippen and and David Robinson and Ewing these guys, we, we've got to get bigger, stronger, better awareness of the game. It's the greatest report card you can get when you can play against those people. That, that just is unbelievable experience. And in some ways, it's a wake-up call. In other ways, it's a confidence builder. Tinsley setting it up once again. Shot clock now down to 11. Again, a 30-second shot clock in international play. Down to six. Way off the mark, Terrence Morris. And Hardaway pushing it up the other end of the floor. Wide open three. Knocks it down. Now, we were talking about point guards before I mentioned Jason Kidd. He's one of the best rebounding point guards I've ever seen. He averaged over seven a game this past season. Uh, who, does, who rivals him? Or who's some of the great rebounding point guards you remember? Well, I can remember when I played right at the end of my career. Magic Johnson was a great defensive rebounder. And when your point guard does that and rebounds the ball, you're automatically into a fast break. That's what Kidd does. That's what, that's what Magic used to do so well to get their break started. Bradford on the pull-up. Off the mark. Rebound morning. Knocked out of his hands by Murphy. Olympic team ball. Kidd actually averaged more boards than a majority of centers in the league. When, when you watch the game, Mike, it's a subtle little thing, but when your big men run the floor, it forces your guards to cover back, and that's why the guards get so many open shots in transition. That's why Harder has it wide open three, because the guards had to cover the big men. Steve Smith short, McDice the rebound, and Antonio McDice very impressive early as the Olympic squad now a 7-0 run. There's a turnover. This is those runs we talked about. They play you even, they play you even, and pretty soon you look up, and it's an 8-0 run. Remember the other night it was a 16-0 run, and it started at the 13-05 mark. Murphy off the mark. It was a two-point game just about a minute and a half ago. Hardaway, nice touch pass back to Jason Kidd. Knocked out of his hands. And still USA Olympic team ball. That last... Beautiful assist, our AT&T connection of the game. Smith, alley-oop for McDice. Now, if he would have got that one, <laughs> that ball almost hit the top of the square. And at the midway point of the first half, what's Rudy Tomjanovic, what's his goal for a game like today in terms of what he wants to prepare for? He wants to keep the defense up. You're stepping in. McDice right there. You're up 11. He slides over and takes the charge. I thought he made a great point, though. Like, I asked him, what's his biggest challenge? And he said, when we get a big lead, overcoming human nature and not losing your focus. And that's what he's going to have to continually do. And he can do it by rotating fresh guys in there. You know, guys don't want to play, so they want to play well while they're out there so they can get their minutes. And he rotates those guys now. A number of substitutions. Gary Payton, Kevin Garnett, Alan Houston, Ray Allen, and Ben Baker. Five new players come in for the first time. This is a group that started the other day. Garnett pass deflected by Murphy. Richardson lobs it out. Here's Jacobson. Murphy. A great shooter from Notre Dame. That's his game right there. He's a big man who can really shoot the ball. Led the Big East in both rebounding and scoring. He's had a crowd groaning. They thought the ball touched out of bounds. Troy Murphy's had some trouble dealing with the size and quickness combination of the NBA players this week. You know, a lot of times when a guy comes in at this time of the year, I wonder how much of it is that maybe you rest a little bit because you played so many minutes uh, during the course of the year and you don't come in in great shape. He's one of those guys who always needs to be in great shape to compete at the level with these kind of players. Ray Allen off the mark. Allen played very, very well in the game against Canada. Carter had a lot of the points, but Allen was superb as well. He had 18 in 18 minutes. Well, how, about, how about this now, Mike? 17 shots by Carter and Ray Allen combined. They scored 47 points. That's almost three points per shot. Unheard of. That's hard to do, despite <laughs> what kind of competition you're playing. Garnett to Payton. Got a little too fancy, and Jason Williams takes advantage. Garnett with a big smile on his face. Battier down the other end. And we're seeing the crowd really start to root for the underdogs here. 
Well, they want to keep this game close. I mean, uh, they, they'd like to see them be able to challenge this team a little bit. Now, remember when the developmental team played in 96 in Auburn Hills, they almost beat them in the first game there. They had them down 17. The United States really had to rally to win that. Jacobson, he's got great range. Uh, to Stanford, terrific outside shooter. All of a sudden, they're on a little run of their own. So what happened when Rudy went to the bench, guys came in, I think they were a little stiff, and they haven't got a sweat up right now, so they got to get themselves into this game. It's back to a four-point game with eight minutes remaining in the first half. Peyton, nice adjustment, won't go. Baker keeps it alive, but can't finish. You see Murphy a little more aggressive here. You know, he might be one of these guys, too, that plays much better in games than he does in practice. There's guys that just do that. They respond, and they get into a game, and they're just much better players. He's playing very, very well right now. And he's, all, he's also one of those guys that you've got to watch over a period of time. You watch him for five minutes, you don't really get his intangibles as a legal screen on Battier. Some of those guys that just, over the course of the season, they impress the heck out of me. United States having some problems turning the ball over. And that's helped the college all-stars. Kevin Garnett, a little too fancy. Peyton not expecting it. And Team USA, the Olympic squad, with nine turnovers. Seven and a half remaining, first half. Closer than expected. United States Olympic squad with a four-point lead here late in the first half. Right now, let's send it to Craig Sager. Well, Jason Kidd, this is not what we expected. You guys turning the ball over nine times and uh, letting the select team pretty much do what they want. What's wrong? Well, we got to hold on to the ball. You nailed it. Uh, if we could get shots, the score would be a lot. Uh, we have the lead, uh, but... They're playing well. They've played us three times, so they're not intimidated, and uh, they're playing quite well. What's the difference in how you guys practice against them and how they're playing here today? Well, TV. TV and the crowd. There was no crowd, and that gives you a little bit more energy. But again, they've, uh, they're have they playing well right now, and we've got to step it up. And uh, we've got to you know, show them that they still have a lot to learn about the game of basketball. Thanks a lot. Let's go back to Mike and Doug. Craig, thank you. You mentioned the turnovers, but Rudy Tamjanovic, he's more concerned with what's going on at the other end of the floor. We, we're letting them dictate to us. They're doing whatever they want. We got to get up. Don't let them feel comfortable uh, with the ball. Get hand pressure. We got to get up. Them up like we did them in practice all yeah. week. Hey, guys, you're out we working. Jump this yeah. now. You know, an interesting thing there, he said, get hand pressure. Now, remember now with the rules last year, they would not let you put your hands on the dribble in the NBA, so the guys have not been doing that. With the college players, the international game, you can do that as we see Ray Allen with the great drive. So the United States playing a little differently here under the rules. In the NBA, the game, they will not let you put your hands on the dribbler. Williams inside. Beautiful move from Jason Williams. But that's one of the reasons, Doug, why they have these pre-Olympic exhibition games, to get used to the different style of play. Peyton comes right back but can't finish. Four-point game, the Olympic squad with their hands full. Man, I tell you, I really like this Jason Williams. I can see why Coach K is in love with this point guard. He finds players, makes great passes. Ray Allen right to the hole. Oh, Ray Allen. Now, see, there's another subtle little rule change, although it wasn't a subtle dunk, but there's that little dotted line, that restricted area in the NBA game where you, if you're underneath the basket, that's a no-call or a block. Here you can see there is none of that, so you can't take that play underneath the basket. Allen takes advantage and nearly comes up with a steal. Yes, forces a turnover. You see him just rise right over the top. Ray Allen, such a smooth player. I think this is one of those guys, as the Olympics go on, people are going to say, man, this guy is a great player. I think he, we know Vince Carter, I think Kevin Garnett, I think Abdul Rahim, those guys are going to really stand out in this international play once they get over to Sydney. Allen, of course, he's had some quick appearances in the playoffs with the Milwaukee Bucks, but not at any length, and that's really where you make your name, but a lot of the guys on the USA team have said, boy, he's better than we thought. Allen fires away, won't go Garnett, the offensive rebound. Garnett with the high release. Knocked away, battled. Nick Collison can't hold on to it. Collison just checking in, and it's Olympic team ball. Again, look at Kevin Garnett. So this guy's a guy that can play three positions out on the floor. He's about seven feet, seven feet one right now, and is so quick. You've got to keep him off that backboard. He's a tremendous offensive rebounder. Peyton looking to post up Corey Bradford. There's Abdul Rahim, gets inside, and a foul on the pass. The select team in the penalty. 
in international play. The eighth foul in each half is the penalty. So Abdul Richard Doug and hits the free throws, lead back up to eight. Under six minutes remaining here in the first half. Garnett with the steal. Allen Houston wide open three, knocks it down. It's only 20 feet six inches. That's easy for the likes of Allen Houston in his range. You got to come back to the ball right now. The select team cannot run away from the dribbler. They need some help back there with all this pressure. Excellent pressure from Garnett. Right, the lefty. Ball knocked loose right back out to Bradford. Richardson. Richardson keeps it going, a three-pointer. He's got 16 points. That's a big shot. Second shot opportunity. The United States, the Olympic team, had a chance to push this lead, and they hit it with a three to cut right back into that lead, make it eight. Allen won't go. Garnett keeps it alive, but Bradford able to save it. Dangerous pass, and Battier tips it up in the air, goes diving. Nice hustle, and the crowd appreciated it. Now, there's the epitome of Shane Battier and the way he plays right there. He will throw himself all over the floor. Defensive player of the year a couple seasons ago in the NCAA. I talked to Coach K there. He said this young guy has won 96 games in his three years at Duke. He's the ultimate winner, and he's hoping here in his senior year they have a great chance to win the NCAA championship before he has to leave Duke. He's one of those kids of... Coach Mike Krzyzewski had a lab to make up a player. That's what he would make up. No question. And he is an unbelievable competitor. Terrific young man as well. Comes up with a loose ball that time. Richardson alley up. Oh, almost put in by Collison, but Allen broke it up. Bradford gets it back. Abdul Rahim wrestles it away. Hey, who are these guys? These are not the guys we scrimmaged against. Garnett rushed it. Allen another rebound. Ray Allen right back up and in. 6'5", athletic, can do everything out on the floor, so smooth. Well, they are playing with confidence, the college players. Right, short, Abdul Rahim, the board. I think you got to give Mike Jarvis some... Garnett! The pass was there. But I, I think you got to give Mike Jarvis and Bob Huggins a lot of credit because they knew what kind of pressure they were going to be facing today, and in a short period of time, they put a pretty good press break offense here. Now, the crowd really would love to have seen this going down. KG on the end of a great pass from Peyton. He just banged it too hard off the rim. The young guys playing here and getting an opportunity to play in the Olympics. And let's compare the championships of 92, that much storied team, much decorated team. Look in 92 now. There had been three previous gold medals, won NCAA titles, NBA titles, a total of 18. Gary Payton has an Olympic gold medal. The rest of the guys have never won any titles. So these guys are hungry to win a championship. That's why you've seen the energy, the enthusiasm, and all that's gone into this. They know that there's a lot of pressure on them, and they want to play well. There's no question they're the clear-cut favorite, not only to win, but to dominate. They're not going to have a problem. They will win the gold medal. But uh, there's always every single Olympics, you know, the teams in Europe and around the world are getting better and better. And you don't want to be the first team not only to not win the gold medal, but to even lose a game. So there, that pressure is there. And as you said, not having won those titles, these guys, we've watched them in practice all this week, and the intensity of the practices would surprise a lot of people who think that all the millions of dollars that they make would spoil them a bit. Not so on one on this team. Meanwhile, the idea of, of losing was brought up to them earlier this week, when, uh, again, since the NBA players have been involved, they've never lost. Well, whatever happened, we've asked them. Excuse me. <laughs> if we lose a game, we'll be blackballed. <laughs> There's no ifs at all. We will not lose a game. <laughs> There's no what. I'm not thinking like that. Don't even ask me that question. I think I come up with better questions than that. You know, <laughs> we're not losing a game. <laughs> <laughs> it's obvious the mindset. Yes, it is. And, you know, the, these guys are having fun. And this team will take on a personality after being together for a while. We saw the Dream Team. It was sort of almost like a traveling rock show with those stars. This team will carve out its own personality the more time they spend with each other. Right now, an 11-point lead. Minute and a half remaining in the first half. Along with Doug Collins and Craig Sager, Mike Green on hand here in Honolulu at the University of Hawaii. Joe Forte well off the mark. Betty tried to keep it alive. And they say last touch by Baker. 
Again, the subtle little plays of Shane Battier. It's an air ball. He tracks it down in the corner, knocks it off one of the uh, Olympic players' legs. Now they're going to get another possession. If they score here, they keep it under 10. That's how it's important. It's just a psychological thing to keep that lead out of double figures going into half. This is equaling the largest lead. Several times the college team has come back within two, mainly because of this man, Richardson. Not a good shot that time. Ball knocked out of bounds. Olympic squad takes over. Coming up at halftime, Hannah Storm will be back in New York in the studio. And a very special, interesting feature with Alonzo Mourning. Craig Sager had a chance to sit down with him. And as Mourning prepares for Sydney. The select team went to a little 2-3 zone on that possession, forced a tough shot, so mixing up the defenses a little bit. Forte passes up a shot. Battier nails the three. He was their best three-point shooter last year for the Blue Devils. He shot 44% from three. I don't think I would have known that had I not looked through the stats. I knew he was shooting it well, but not that well. Garnett. Nice speed inside. Abdul Rahim with the adjustment. When you're playing a zone, you can't let that ball go in the middle. It just breaks your whole defense down. Uh, U.S. wants to get the, la the select team. Would like to get the last shot here if possible. Just uh, too quick. Richardson misses that three. Wright pushes off a little bit to get the board and goes right in strong. So Michael Wright, the junior, or will be a junior in Arizona with a nice play. Kevin Garnett's high school team made it. Farragut. Ball knocked out of bounds. Wright was a freshman when Garnett was a senior. They've had some fun this week going against each other. Five seconds remain in the first half. Now you know they have a set play here that they've worked on. He's probably a Ray Allen or Gary Payton coming off a double or coming off a double screen here, maybe looking for a quick shot or dumping inside, looking for a quick one. Final seconds. Abdul Rahim takes it to the goal, puts it in at the buzzer. So as they go to the locker rooms at halftime, the 2000 United States men's Olympic team with a 10-point lead over a game group of college all-stars the better team select plays the better it will prepare the united states olympic team this is great for them this is exactly what rudy t wants you've got to credit mike jarvis bob huggins and the staff they've done a nice job very competitive first half all right now let's go to craig sager well ray how would you describe the first half people are expecting you guys to blow them out I think we were playing a little timid. We played them two times this past week, and we had some pretty tough games against them. We locked them down. Tonight, we're not playing any defense. What is the difference in the rotation starting lineups? Is it difficult for you in a situation like this to come off the bench? Not really. You know, I've come off the bench a lot of times over throughout my career, but now we just got to go in the game and play basketball. You have six points, two rebounds, two assists in just nine minutes. Now, I know Jason Richardson is not your man, but you on him for a little bit. What are you guys going to do about him in the second half? 19 points. I think we have to have better court awareness. We're not fi finding the shooter right now, and he's a shooter. We've got to find him and make sure that he doesn't score no more for the rest of the game. All right, thanks a lot. Let's go back to Mike and Doug. All right, Craig, no question. The defense, not as aggressive as we've seen both at scrimmages this week and certainly against Canada the other day, although it has resulted in some points. Vince Carter and the United States Olympic squad, a 10-point lead. Halftime here in Hawaii. team with just a 10-point lead over their college all-stars at 49-39. Hi again, everyone, along with Doug Collins, Mike Breen on hand. I guess you could say it's a surprise how well the college players. How surprised are you? I'm very surprised. I, I expected the United States to get through one of those spurts where they got a 18-20 you know, point lead, speaking of the Olympic team, but the select team hung in there, and they really did it with their three-point shooting, Mike. They were 8 of 15. 24 of their 39 points have come from behind that three-point line, and that's why they've been able to stay alive. Also, 12 turnovers for the Olympic team, way too many. They were careless with the basketball. Just a little lack of concentration today in the team, and the select team is ready to play. Some of the highlights, and there certainly were plenty at both ends of the floor from both squads. Well, the three-point shooting I talked about, this is Corey Bradford. He steps up and hits the three. The, the surprise has been Jason Richardson, not a, not a good three-point shooter. He's four of six. Shane Batty on the break, and you see how open these shots are. That's not the kind of defense we've come to expect from the Olympic team. And the numbers you see once again uh, from the champion halftime stats, the turnover is a real big story. Richardson, 19 of the 34 points. But the USA Select, even shooting only 37%, that three-point line has kept them within uh, 
reach here of the Olympic team. The college kids showing some confidence and aggressiveness. But another half to come. We'll have that second half when we return. A 10-point lead for the Olympic squad. from a viewing standpoint, but as the coach, are you a little surprised you're only up by 10? No, I'm not surprised. Uh, you know, it's, it's a competitive game. These kids uh, have had a couple of scrimmages against us. They, uh, when we did go into our press, we, we missed a couple rotations and left uh, Richardson, who's a great shooter, open. He got some free looks there. Uh, I thought even though we missed a lot of easy shots, 49 points and a 20-minute half is okay, we just got to do a better job defensively. What did the players say at halftime? Were they upset that Richardson torched them for 19? Uh, you know, I didn't get into what they were saying. I was more concentrated on, uh, on what I was saying. <laughs> That's a good job, Coach. Let's go back to Mike and Doug. <laughs> Sorry, Chris. US Doug, translate that laugh for me. <laughs> well, I guarantee you the players were challenging each other. Rudy stepped away. It's what we talked about, the leadership. On a team like this, you call on the players to bring out the best in each other, the coach to work on the execution. We'll find out in the first five minutes here if the select team can hang around or if the United States the Olympic team can come out and get that defensive pressure and break this game open. But the first five minutes vital here for the select team. Right now for the Olympic squad, Tim Hardaway, Steve Smith, Antonio McDice, Alonzo Morning goes crashing to the floor. Ken Johnson and Morning with a collision. And McDice, the other player. Morning obviously okay and some nice sportsmanship between the two well, that'll be ken johnson's fourth foul as he just throws zoe down zoe had gotten into the lane so ken johnson's played less than five minutes and has four fouls guess mike george is going to leave him out there and says i might as well hardaway steps back off the mark battier the rebound again the pressure on this olympic team and they feel it in terms of they don't want to just win. They do want to dominate. And Johnson comes down and slams it home. A nice aggressive play there by Shane Baddiel. He drove the ball to the basket. And as the shot blocker came over, Zoe trying to block the shot, Ken Johnson right there for the tip in. So the aggressive play by Baddiel, even though he didn't make the shot, set up the tip dunk. Morning against Johnson. Pass inside deflected by Forte. Baddiel comes away with it. Johnson comes up. Terrific aggressive play from this college select team. Forte blocked by McDice. Carter's pass deflected by Battier. What a great defensive play by Battier. Saved the dunk there by Zoe. Let's see if the select team can convert. McDice again. Two that's, rejections. That's the difference right there in a college game. You don't see McDice and Alonzo Mourning back there. This is where the select team has to grow as young players. The great block by McDice on Forte. And then here's Jason Williams going in, and McDice once again rakes that one out of there. So two great block shots. And then the select team turns it over. Vince Carter spinning inside, forces it up. Left-handed, banks it in. Pretty move for Vince Carter. So instead of a chance to get to within six, you missed two opportunities, and now it goes back to ten. Carter, again, who had the 29 points. It's only a second shot attempt. Had the 29 points against Canada the other day. Battier misses a three. McDice running the floor, blocked for the foul from Battier. There's that same problem you talk about, the college players just not used to this kind of transition. But see, that's not Shane Battier's fault. He took the jump shot. His man ran at him and ran down the floor, had a step on him. Your guard's got to get back and cover that. That's why you've got to get back and get floor balance. So when the shooter takes the shot in the NBA, players are taking off to get to the other end. College players don't see that. So this is another transition for them. McDice missing the first free throw. McDice talking the other day about as a teenager, he watched the dream team on television. That's why being named to this team was such an honor for him. It's the second free throw, 11 point game early here in the second half. You know, I think there's a lot of people out there that feel like these guys are pros and a little jaded about, you know, playing and things like that. But every one of them to a man talked about what a humbling experience it is to play for their country. I think that was great. Forte. McDice rips down another rebound. Forte's forced some shots today. That's not the same kind of shots we saw him taking earlier in the week. He's pressing to try to score right now. Morning down low against Johnson. And be careful here. He's got four. Steve Smith has been quiet here today so far. Ball deflected by Richardson. Makes the save right to Jason Williams. And Jason Williams with authority. 
but Jason Richardson continues to impress. Long arms went after his old Michigan State buddy there, Steve Smith, and got the best of that with a deflection. Nice pass to Jason Williams. Hardaway, hop step. Forte the rebound. Again, if you had to say the big difference as Richardson misfires between the dominance over Canada the, the other night and this game is the defense is not as maniacal. McDice on the fast break, not as maniacal as what we saw. But I think a lot of that is the fact that you've got some great point guards here who can handle that kind of pressure. Now, the other night, Steve Nash played. But other than that, they didn't have the caliber of player of Jason Williams and Forte and Jamal Tinsley and some of the players that we've seen come in the game and handle that basketball. Even the bigger guys, Shane Battier, they can handle the basketball. So a different kind of look. And you saw the difference in the amount of steals with all the, or at least the better ball handlers. See, Mike, when they get over to Sydney, you're going to see a team that maybe has three guys that can handle the ball uh, if you're playing a good team. And that's the difference. Oh, Carter. Oh. That's what they wait to see. You know, Vince Carter, as I said, it's a, everybody can go home now. They've seen Vince Carter get their, <laughs> the power slam. That's what they see on all the cable shows, all the sports centers, all those kind of things. They now have seen Vince Carter at his best. You, you almost, not that you forget what he did this year, but because the Raptors were eliminated so early in the playoffs and because he wasn't an original selection, oh, yeah, Vince Carter's on the team. <laughs> Williams' long three-pointer. Ken Johnson tips it back out. Nice play from Johnson. Johnson with a running hook shot won't go. Vince Carter with a running fast break. Ken Johnson, a much better defender than offensive player right now. Great pass. Steve Smith to Carter. And the explosive power once again of Vince Carter. Williams blocked by Smith, going right back at him. And it's still the select team's ball. Well, Vince Carter once again showing his prowess. The highlight package in full effect now, Mike Green. You see Vince Carter there with a follow-up, and he loves it, the energy, the emotion. Antonio McDice with a follow-up, and there it is once again, the, another look at the same dunk by Vince Carter. And here's the most recent one, the great penetrating drive, the follow-up, and the strong finish once again by Vince Carter. Two straight dunks as they push the lead to 15 here with just under 16 minutes to go. I think it's uh, any kid's dream. And me being a kid, um, I really have, you know, dreamed about this, uh, you know, watching the 84 Olympics and, uh, you know, watching the 92 and the 96. And now to have this opportunity, you know, this is uh, anybody's dream. He's been bright-eyed all week in passing to some of the great players in the league. His numbers over the course of his career. Right now, let's send it over to Craig Sager. Well, first of all, we got to talk to you about the select team. Doug Collins mentioned how you were part of that team a few years ago. Are you surprised they're playing so well here? No, that's what happens. They get really, you know, they get their adrenaline pumping, and a lot of them, they really don't know what they're doing. They're just playing extremely hard and getting to a rhythm. We all know how proud you guys are to represent the country, but is it hard not getting all the minutes in the playing time? Well, you know, a situation like this, I just thank God that he's put me in this position, you know, and, and it's a blessing just to be here with all these guys and spend time with them. And you take it, you know, you take it with a grain of salt, you just have fun with it, and when you get in there, you just have some fun and play hard. All right, thanks a lot. Back to Mike right. and Doug. All right, Craig, there's no question, Doug, everybody wants to play and wants to be on there as much as they possibly can, but they've all so far checked their egos. Well, you're talking about a 40-minute game instead of a 48-minute NBA game. Twelve guys you try to get into the rotation instead of maybe nine if you're an NBA coach. It's a very, very tough thing to juggle. That's why you have to have great cooperation from the players. Carter comes up with a loose ball, tries to get it to Morning, but threw too far ahead. You know, Mike, as I listen to the guys talk about the dream of becoming an Olympian. Now, these are NBA players talking. I remember in 72, as we see Jason Kidd with the steal, a lazy pass by Terrence Morris. But in 72, after I made the Olympic team, I dreamed about being in the NBA. These guys are in the NBA dreaming about being an Olympian. Richardson goes right at Alonzo Morning and draws the foul. He is not back down from anyone, and the crowd has really come to pick him up as their favorite. The ultimate respect right here is when you go at Alonzo Morning, and he challenges him. And so, you know what, he takes the hard fall here, but I guarantee you, he respects the fact this young guy went at him. That's the only way Zoe would have it. That's the kind of competitor that he is. 
Now, you and I, we had the, this, this discussion the other day. Of course, now you have the NBA players. If the United States decided to send a group of all-stars, say a, a college select team like this, had them through a camp and sent them to the Olympics, I think it would be very difficult for them to win the gold medal. Well, I would agree with you for this reason. When you look down at this, this select team, you've got five sophomores to be, three juniors, only four seniors at Garnett's inside. So, you know, we talk about how young the NBA players are today, leaving school early. Look how young the select team is. All, everything is getting younger, and I think it's the experience and the strength that would be a major difference. And, of course, when you get into international ball with the different rules and the different referees, as you certainly well know from your 72 experience, you never know what can happen. Well, you see Vince Carter underneath the basket again. It's that first five minutes, and look what's happened with the lead. Now, they played five and a half minutes. It's gone 10 to 20. That's, that's the difference. That's what the Olympic team can do. They can lock you down, and that's what they're doing right now. They're on a 12-1 run. Williams tied up. And, again, defense has been the key. Morris fires away, puts it in. Terrence Morris, who will be entering his senior year at Maryland. Kid rifle pass, Morning couldn't handle it, and a turnover. Vin Baker reports back in for the United States, and Morning will sit down. Jim, I, I also think that, you know, it's not so much how many minutes you play. I, I think one of the things that's hard, once you've been in the NBA a while and you've played a while, when you sit after warming up, you get really stiff. And then you come out and you got to get going. I think that's the hardest thing to do. Especially because all of these guys are, you know, the stars are their team pretty much. And they're just not used to it. It's a huge adjustment. And let me tell you something. When you've played 100 plus NBA games, you're no longer can just jump right up and play. you got sore ankles, sore knees, as we see Vince Carter once again in the post. But all of a sudden, that body starts to ache a little bit from the pounding that you get during an NBA season. Carter, meanwhile, 10 of his 14 here in the second half. He's 6 of 6 from the field as they call a foul on Steve Smith. The schedule coming up on Tuesday and Wednesday. Games will be on TNT. They'll be in Japan playing against Spain and then Japan. And we'll have the Australia game next Saturday as they get ready for Sydney. That's less than two weeks away, the opening ceremonies. Garnett, an easy steal. Two on uh -oh. one. Uh oh, uh oh, Carter. <laughs> oh, Vince Carter. Lenny Wilkins is here and he's smiling every time I talk to Lenny. His smile keeps getting bigger and bigger the more he sees the Vince Carter. <laughs> Carter's new head coach of the Toronto Raptors. Bradford off the mark. Garnett, good rebound in traffic. And the Olympic team now starting to flex their muscles here in the second half. Up by 21. Garnett inside. Tough angle shot. Pride is an amazing thing, isn't it? They went in even with a 10-point lead at halftime. The Olympic team knew that they had not played well. They go in, they challenge each other. A 10-point lead goes to 23, and we played less than eight minutes here, Michael, in the second half. And here's our AT&T connection of the game. And what a connection. That is a long-distance, altitude-wise connection. An 18-4 run by the USA Olympic team. This is perfect fast break. Mike, this is when they're at their best, right here. Running, playing loose and free, and having some fun. Slow start in the first half. He has exploded here in the second half. Well, he has that capability, you know. Wall.com. You get all the stories and the highlights and the numbers, both the men's and the women's team. USABasketball.com. Get you ready for the Olympic Games. Vince Carter seems ready. A little slow start in the first half. He has exploded here in the second half. Well, he has that capability. You know, Mike, we talked about in our open. He had 29 points of the night against Canada on nine shots. He made it look so easy. Well, look what he's got here. Ten of the last 16 points. He's seven for seven. Please, 14 out of 16. Uh, in this tournament, and he's doing it so easily. I think that's what's great. He's doing it within the flow of the team and in a spectacular way. And getting the crowd going with some of the usual Vince Carter antics. Well, he just has such great ability to get to that offensive board. You've got to get a body on him. He catches the ball underneath the basket, does a little 180 spin for a little left-handed pass from 
Jason Kidd, and here's another dunk. So Vince Carter can step out, he can shoot the three, he can put it on the floor. We know he can dunk, and he's getting better and better every time he steps foot on the floor. That's what you'd like to see in a young player. And again, not an original selection. He was placed on the team after Tom Gugliotta had to step aside with his injury, and he's now the youngest member of the team. Only 23 years old. That's Corey Bradford who's back in. Bradford will be a junior at Illinois. Morris makes his move, kicks it out. Murphy with the open jumper, doesn't miss a lot of those. That's what he does. He steps up and makes that shot. But give a lot of credit to Terrence Morris. He's had a very subpar game here. He's not been involved, but he makes a nice penetrating dribble and gets Troy Murphy a wide open jumper. Gary Payton back in the game along with Garnett, Smith, Baker, and Jason Kidd. Alley up to Baker, broken up nicely by Morris, knocked out of bounds. And still Olympic team ball as Alan Houston will come back in for the Olympic team and Shane Battier for the college All-Stars. Houston, of course, coming off one of his best seasons in the NBA. His first All-Star appearance with the Knicks. Dayton throws it away. Just over eight minutes gone by here in the second half. United States pulling away a bit, up by 21, after the college team hung with them for a little over a half. Look where they're pushed out here, too. They just keep further and further away. That's what defensive pressure will do. That clock is down, and they're still at half court. Richardson kicks it back out. Bradford, two on the shot clock. Three-pointer won't go. Garnett tips it. Right to Peyton. Peyton with a fancy pass to Kidd. The childhood buddies connecting. Kidd on the double team and Houston as well. Back pass for Peyton. Stripped by Battier. Peyton tried to get it back. And it's going to be the college ball. So one of these things these guards find out is you could not be careless or lazy with that ball. Corey Bradford more of a two guard at Illinois, great shooter, but down here handling the ball and they just swarmed him and he coughed it up. So you see Tinsley in the game right now. He's gonna make sure he handles the basketball. The United States has really turned up the heat, the Olympic team, pressure wise, and they've turned this game around, Mike, with their defense. You don't see any of those open three-point shots anymore, although here's one with from Morris that, he not, uh, that he's able to... <laughs> <laughs> now, is that a three or a two? <laughs> a three-pointer <laughs> for Terrence Morris. <laughs> that was a... Uh... You can touch the ball above the cylinder, but you can't put, put your hand through the rim like that as Baker trying to knock it out. Nice touch pass, Kevin Garnett. Well, the select team went again to that 2-3 zone defense. You get right to the free throw line. You present a big man there. Nice pass from inside for the layup, and that's exactly what you do, attack the middle of that zone. Richardson misfires. Richardson, who had that big first half, 19 points, only has a point here in the second half. Garnett double team, gets it out. Houston spotting up for three. I tell you what, I'd love to play with Jason Kidd. That guy will get a shooter wide open shots. He, no hesitation. Mike, he had an open shot. He swung it to Allen Houston. And th that's what you have to do as a point guard. What a great play. I think there are 11 Olympians who will say that by the time this is all over. I would love to play with this guy. Morris, three-pointer won't go. Tipped right back out to him. Just past the midway point. The Olympic team with their largest lead, a 25-point advantage. Now, this is my first time attending a basketball game in Hawaii as Battier misses. Crowd goes through some real lulls, but it's very, <laughs> it's very quiet. Baker inside puts it in. We'll see what's happened, too. The edge has been taken off the game right now. It's a 27-point game. They were sort of hoping the select team could hung, hang around, but I knew the pride coming out of that Olympic team locker room at halftime when Rudy T was talking about his players and what they were saying. I guarantee you they were getting after each a little bit about being embarrassed not take anything away from the select team, but they just didn't have that same edge. Morris against Garnett. Quick move won't go. Garnett nearly tips it in. Battier gets it back. Blocked by Garnett. Pass deflected by Richardson. Peyton to Kidd. Kidd trying to draw the foul. Does. Shot won't go. But he'll shoot a couple. 
with 8.47 remaining. They've had it going here in the second half. A Team USA, Gary Payton with a nice little lob, little scissor kick by Ben Baker, a couple Sonics hooking up there, and then this is Terrence Morris with that little toilet bowl three. It's touched on the rim, but he finally gets it to go. A lovely way to describe. <laughs> a little round and around and around. Kid able to knock it down. Kid, of course, who broke his ankle tail end of the season, came back and helped him defeat the Spurs in the first round of the playoffs. NBA's assist leader last couple of years. He came back from an ankle surgery. They put pins in his ankle. He played in five weeks. And, you know, he wasn't right in the playoffs. You could see he had some tendonitis, but he gutted it out, played pretty well. But now he says he's healthy once again after a little rest. Never entered his mind, according to Kidd, that he wouldn't come back and play. Baker on the rejection of Tinsley. Remember in our open, we showed the practice sessions. And guys have to learn now. When you drive in there, this happened to me at practice. We saw Tinsley drive in there and McDice get it. This time it's Baker. No finger rolls against the Olympic team. Mike, you got to go strong. And that's what these young guys are finding out. That's how they learn. That's why it's so important to the development of their careers. There are very few college players who are going to reject those as Abdul Rahim gets it. Quick outlet to Baker stolen nicely by Tinsley. Morris, not hesitant to shoot it, puts in the two-pointer. Now, one of the things that Rudy T does not want to have happen is for them to get a lead and get sloppy. They've played exceptionally well for about a 12-minute stretch, finish the game off. They're up by over 30, much of the second half against Canada. Ray Allen knocks down the three that on Thursday night. And now up by 30 against the college team. Jacobson misses Battier right there. Great effort play by Shane Battier. He has struggled with his shooting today. He has not shot the ball well. He's been much more aggressive, though, on the offensive end than we saw him in the practice session. Houston. Long on that three. Tinsley will come the other way. Seven and a half left here in the second half. And as you said, though, the way the college All-Stars did not back down came right at him. Certainly, this was good experience for the Olympic team as well as these young kids. That helps the Olympic team. You want to have a competition as we see Terrence Moore start to heat it up. He's hit three threes here in about the last three minutes. But you want competition. That's the way you get an edge. If you just walk out on the floor and beat everybody easily, you know, it's, it's tough to develop your team. Blocked by Morris, but a foul as Houston fed Baker. And Baker will shoot a few. And you can bet a lot of these college select team, they want to be on the Olympic team down the road. Well, Ray Allen spotting up and shooting the three. You go to a 2-3 zone, you put three shooters in, and you bust it. That's why you have the versatility. Vince Carter and the Olympic team, a 25-point lead. With just under seven minutes remaining. He only had four points at halftime, but is exploding here in the second half. 12 of his 16. He's been enjoying his time in Hawaii, and he's not hesitant to admit that things are well. Life for me is good. I can't lie to you about that. Life is good. Um, stressful. There's <laughs> a lot going on. Uh, all the time, a lot going on. But uh, as a kid and, and as, a, as a basketball player all over the world, this is the position you want to be in. You want to have the, the accolades and you want to be in the Olympics. You want to win the slam dunk contest. You want to be a starter in the all-star game. And I've accomplished that. And playing well once again today, and his new head coach in the NBA is right now standing by with Craig Sager. Now we know how much Vince Carter is looking forward to having Lenny Wilkins as his coach, but let's ask it the other way around. How excited are you to have Vince Carter on your team? I'm already a better coach. <laughs> you know, uh, he, you know he's got the great. He, he's a great kid, and he's got the complete package. And I'm looking forward to working with him. You see him out to make these spectacular dunks. You write down plays, you get your playbook expanded. Well, you know, a lot of that's in transition, and you get that from running and pushing the ball up the court, and we want to do that. And I think that's why uh, getting Mark Jackson was a big acquisition for us uh, this summer, so that we can get out and run, and, and these things happen, you know, on the spur of the moment. You're in the Hall of Fame as a player. You're in the Hall of Fame as a coach. You've won NBA title. You've won Olympic gold. Why do you have the enthusiasm to go take over Toronto? Because of a young man like Vince Carter. You know, 
those kind of guys bring out all enthusiasm. The coaches enjoy working with young people like that. They make you want to keep coaching. Thanks a lot for being with us. Let's go back now to Mike and Doug. Even with all his success, simply says, Vince Carter on my team, I'm a better <laughs> coach. As, of course, he coached back in 96 in Atlanta. Once again, they went undefeated. Team dominant to win the gold medal. David Robinson, of course, the big part of that team. And he's on hand. Team Elijah Wan, Keel O'Neill, John Stockton, along with Gary Payton, who, as we've mentioned, is the lone returnee as Ben Baker knocks down the free throw. And right from the beginning, when they arrive, Peyton has become the leader of this squad. Him and his teammate from Seattle, whether or not Baker plays for Seattle this year, still remains to be seen. In fact, it's ironic how you have two of your Olympians, with Vin Baker and Tim Hardaway, that don't know exactly who they're going to play for when this is all over. And camp starts as soon as they get back, Doug. Yeah, it does. I expect him to be with Seattle. Uh, I just think that uh, they talked about, uh, we said here, uh, we see Ray Allen getting the time roll, but when Paul Westfall talked the other day, he said when they were going to do that deal, it was a two-for-one deal. It was going to be Patrick Ewing and signing Maurice Taylor. Maurice Taylor has signed to go with Rudy T. in Houston, so he said that deal's off. So I expect Ben Baker to be there, and they're going to need this next 40 days before he comes back and gets in training camp, especially he and Gary Payton to get them excited to go back to Seattle and be ready to perform. Everybody's different in how they handle, first off, just hearing their name in trade rumors, and his was almost done, that deal, as they forced another turnover. Houston, that's a two-pointer for Allen Houston. These players are so great. When you give a guy an open shot like that, Mike, and you've seen it, you just expect it to go in. Jacobson gets around. Baker try to get it. For Casey Jacobson, who will be a sophomore at Stanford. Pac-10 freshman of the year this past season. So they wanted Jacobson at Duke. Mike Krzyzewski yes. recruited him. Well, he and Mike Dunleavy Jr. were the two guys that uh, Coach K had recruited. They were both interested in Stanford and Duke. Casey Jacobson went to Stanford, and Michael Dunleavy Jr. went to Duke. So both of them ended up uh, in great places and have become great young players. Things working out well for both teams, both schools. Lead now up to 32. This is the largest of the game with 5.20 remaining. And this U.S. Olympic team, they will fly to Japan tomorrow for those two games. Uh, as the backcourt violation goes, more substitutions. Marie Tomjanovic sending in Antonio McDyce, Vince Carter, and Tim Hardaway. If there's one thing that, that I hope young players are watching out there, both female and male, is that you can't make one-handed passes off the dribble. And Mike, you'll see so many turnovers where guys dribbling the basketball, and he, tries to, uh, he or she tries to pass off the dribble with one hand. If any defensive pressure, you can't pull that ball back, and it's a turnover. Put two hands on the ball and make crisp passes. I've seen about six or eight of those today here. The fundamentals make all the difference. Abdul Rahim, Tim Hardaway with a nice entry pass. 34-point lead now with under five minutes remaining. See, now again, you think, well, it's hard for them to keep the energy up. But with three of these guys, they've been on the bench for a while. It's now their time to shine. So they want to keep pouring it on as Battier is fouled by McDyce. When you get out there, you, you've got to prepare yourself. As you're sitting on the bench, start getting an idea. You'll get a feel of when Rudy makes his substitutions. And you'll start getting yourself ready. If it means putting heat packs on or getting up and walking around, doing whatever you have to do. So when you go in there, you're ready to play. Because the last thing you want to do is go in there and maybe pull a muscle. And again, Rudy T is so sensitive to, to working with these players. I mean, we've seen it in practice, Mike, the way he worked with them. Uh, Shane Battier misses a free throw, but making sure they got stretched. Uh, after they played the other day and traveled, he cut back the practice schedule. He realizes the commitment these players are giving him, and he wants to keep them as fresh as possible. Players have enjoyed so far their time with him. Tom Janovich, who is finishing up his 30th year with the Houston Rockets franchise as a player, a scout, assistant coach. Peyton knocked in the head by Ken Johnson. Guess who the foul's on? Yeah. Poor Ken Johnson's got a sign on that says, I foul today, I think. <laughs> that is his... That is his fifth, and he is fouled out again in international play. 5,000, you're disqualified, one less than the NBA. 
a set play coming out of a timeout. It's a little sideline screen, and McDice is going to the front of the rim for the dunk, and Ken Johnson's just a little slow in the rotation. You've got to remember now, as long as he is and as well as he can jump, Antonio McDice, one of the best leapers in the NBA, you've got to get there one step sooner. Again, a part of the learning process. In the NBA, you play defense a little bit ahead, not from behind. You're a little step slow, you're going to get the foul. Johnson fouling out in... Eight minutes, alley -oop for Ray Allen. Oh, terrific adjustment from Ray Allen. I said what I would love to be able to have Ray Allen on one wing and Vince Carter on the other with either Peyton or Kidd coming down the floor. I think I'd be a good coach for that team. <laughs> Jacobson picks it up. 35-point lead. Collison well short. McDice and Hardaway finally get together. Abdul Rahim, he's a good three-point shooter, knocks it down. I mean, here's a guy who's hardly played much today. He comes in and he hits the shot. That's what you got to do. Get in there and produce. And that's a big ch chance for Abdul Rahim to play. Uh, you, people don't see him play much out there in Vancouver. And he is a great player. Did all four of his shots. The Olympic team is at 62% from the field. Battier tries to get it inside. Nice save from McDice. Despite the big lead, the United States still playing very tough defense. Ray Allen. Uh-oh, looks like McDice had one there for a dunk. Just mistimed it. Collison. Williams hits the three. Jason Williams, one of the impressive things about him at Duke, he really wasn't a point guard when he came to Duke and had to make the adjustment. Boy, did he make it ever. As Collison comes down with a rebound. Well, Coach K does a lot of pro-style stuff. He runs a lot of screen roll, doesn't run a lot of continuity offense. So these players... You know, he's used to playing screen roll at the top of the floor on the wing. You can see Nick Collison uh, putting a smile on Roy Williams' face there with a nice follow. Going to be a sophomore at the University of Kansas. But, you know, a lot of coaches play continuity in college. Some play the pro-style offense. And Duke is much of an up-tempo. They get stuff off their defense. A lot of running, a lot of open court. You know, tailor-made for the NBA game. Good ball movement. Carter gets inside. Knocked out of his hands by Murphy. Williams to Jacobson. And one of the rare times that you see the college kids beat the Olympic team down the floor. Under two and a half remaining. The exhibition tour continuing as Carter draws the foul. He'll shoot a couple. And more substitutions as we'll have a timeout on the floor. The subtleties of running a little play. Here's Ray Allen, a little fake in the reverse, and he's going to get the slam dunk. You set the man up. You think he's going off the screen. You give him a little push, the nice pass, a little kiss off the glass. It'll misdirect you. If you want to come back to the left, left, set your man up, go right. Nice pass by Hardaway. Great finish by Ray Allen. Let's go back to Mike and Doug. Thank you, Craig. Three said we're told the distinction of being the youngest gold medalist in Olympic basketball history and the oldest. She was 20 when she got her first gold medal. She was 32 back in Atlanta. She can add to her oldest record if the women win in Sydney. A real legend in the women's basketball game. Coming up on two minutes remaining, the alley hook attempt for Richardson. Carter quickly down the other end. <laughs> You know, the amazing thing about Vince Carter is he explodes, but how quickly he gets in the air. He's like a rocket that's taking off. He has made it fun despite a 34-point lead. Batty eight trying to get inside. Jason Williams knocks down the three. You think the uh, Olympic team has made a commitment in this second half to get a handle on Jason Richardson? He has been rather quiet after explosive first half. He has only one point. Of the 19 in the first half. <laughs> Minute and a half remaining. Williams with the steal, trying to get it to Richardson, and turns it over. That, that's where Coach K will tell him when he gets back, get possession of the ball, make the simple play. As Vince Carter explodes once again, he takes that ball down to his waist, a little tomahawk dunk. Sometimes he does things so quickly, you don't even know all the stuff that's in his dunk. Jason Williams puts it in that one, that dunk from Carter, a little reminiscent of the All-Star. Yeah. Well, you know what? You do those uh, slam dunk competitions I've done before, 
And you don't realize how good they are until you see them in slow motion and all the little twists and turns that these guys can, can do while they're in the air. Now, when you say you've done before, do you mean performing? I, I have never <laughs> done them. I have been, I tell you what, though, I was a good alley-oop passer to Dr. J. I knew where, I knew where to throw it. Absolutely. <laughs> 106 remaining. And he'll jump it up. The college all-stars has done a nice job in terms of, you know, for a while they hung in there. They played well, played tough, but obviously outmanned. And it was a good experience for the Olympic team as well to be in a tight game and then just to say, okay, let's get down to business. No question. And now they're heading back to school and October 15th or 14th, they'll start their first practices. So... Whereas the United States will continue on the Olympic team to get prepared for Sydney. These guys will all go back and get back into school and try to combine the books and the and the basketball. And they all want to get to that final four and win a national championship. And there's two or three guys out here who I think have great chance. You know, Michael Wright with Arizona. They're going to, going to be playing on one of the better teams. Duke is always, is always going to be there. So some of these guys, maybe Michigan State with Richardson. So Joe Forte and Carolina. Joe Forte of Carolina. So a lot of these guys, Kansas and Colleton, you go right down the list that... Uh, they want to win the NCAA championship. As the United States Olympic team is going for the gold, they're going to go home and try to win that coveted NCAA uh, trophy. Ray Allen hitting the first two was fouled on the three-point attempt. Like in the NBA, when you're fouled, you get the three shots from the line. Final minute. And what is another blowout victory? There'll be a lot of them, both in the pre-Olympic tour and in the Olympic Games. Again, the men, the heavily favorite, not just to win, but to dominate. McDyce's outlet pass deflected. Yugoslavia, though, Russia, and Australia, some of the men's team that are uh, hoping for medals in Sydney. Whereas the women, as we saw earlier, uh, they will have a tough battle. Carter looking up at the stock clock. Decides on the three, knocks it down. See, that's illegal. That's illegal. For a guy to be able to play around the basket and then have that kind of touch, Mike, the guy shot 40% from behind the three-point line, the NBA three-point line this year. Williams off the mark, gets the tip right back to him. Shot clock is turned off. Forte for three. Uh, Joseph Forte's had a miserable afternoon. He's a much better player than this. Crowd wants another Carter alley up, and they get it. <laughs> oh! Carter. Wow. I'd like to be able to do that once. Just one time. He's 10 for 10, although they're pretty high percentage. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> Man, I come down like that at my age, I'd be in the hospital. <laughs> That's the buzzer. Carter with a nice exclamation point as the Olympic squad dominating in the second half. And some nice handshakes. These college kids have earned some respect. And uh, the college kids have also something to aim for in what they've watched from the NBA Olympic squad. In the end result, you always earn respect when you come in and you play hard and you compete. And that's what these young guys did. And you know what? The Olympic team was on them a little bit during the course of the week. They'll go over, they'll give them a hug, give them a tap, and say, you know what? Go back and have a great year growth from this experience. This is wonderful to see the young guys talking to the college players. This is mentoring. Yeah, the respect is continuing. <laughs> it's Carter. 18 of his 22 in the second half. Or well, check that 20 of his 24 after intermission. You know, he's one of these guys that when he does something like this, NBA players get excited, and it's tough to get them excited. When they see something like that, the bench goes crazy. I don't know about the, the <laughs> posturing. I don't know if it's going to go over very well in Olympic play over in Sydney. But Carter enjoying himself here. Let's go to Craig Sager. <laughs> well, let's see about to have a hug. <laughs> well, Vince, we talk about ex exciting your teammates, your crowd, but you're pointing in the audience and some of these people that even you can't believe how excited they got. Oh, it's, I'm having a great time, man. It's just it's wonderful, and I'm, you know we just put on a show. We're trying to get better and still have a good time, and we're doing them both. We decided to slam dunk contest, make the spectacular dunks, but how difficult is it in transition when you got other players on the court? I don't know. Yeah, I just do it. Uh, you never know. You might make it and you might not. Uh, I'm not afraid to miss. So um, I just have a good time and, um, you know, if I don't make it, oh well. If I do, they get a treat. You said you're not afraid to miss. You know you're a perfect 10 for 10 today. Really? I don't know. Hey, it's been my, my, 
debut uh, as, as Olympian, having a good time, and I have luck on my side right now. Having a great year in Toronto, being the leading vote getter for the All-Star Game, winning the slam dunk, taking your team to the playoffs, but really not getting a lot of the national recognition. What does this mean for you? Oh, this means a lot. This is a chance of a lifetime, not for, for me, but yet for the Raptors. Um, uh, we're, we're getting the opportunity to play on TV now, and, and it's wonderful, and you know, I'm, I'm glad to represent the Raptors, and I hope I can do it well. Is there any way to explain or describe what it feels like to elevate, to soar above that rim like that, make the jam, and then have a look around and everybody's just cheering, standing on their feet for you? <laughs> uh, you know, a lot of things goes to probably my good friend Joe uh, pushing me out there running in on the football field with him, getting my legs right, uh, um, I'm in shape, and, uh, you know, just having a good time. Uh, I'm, I'm blessed. I'm just blessed. There was one time on the alley-oop, you're at the, so the receiving end, you threw into Alonzo Mourning. Did you think that he could jump as high as you could on that one? It was, it was a nice, easy lob. I was intended for just to lay in his hands and he go dunk it. But he said, hey, I thought you were going to throw it to me. Then I would have dunked it. So I know next time. All right, keep going the highlights. Now let's go back to Mike. All right, Craig, thanks very much. And we are joined by Alonzo Morning. A response? Hey, I wasn't going to jump. <laughs> no, I got a I response for him. Like Wait till he's played as many, as many as many minutes as you've played. He's not going to be jumping like that either. Man, he is amazing. I think he's <laughs> from another planet, man. <laughs> really, really, man. He's out there soaring through the air. I mean, that's one of the things I was looking forward to, watching him play this summer. Well, you know, I talked to Mike on yeah. the air, and I said, you know, it's one thing that the crowd gets excited. Uh -huh. But when he does it, uh -huh. the team gets excited. Yeah. And when you get you guys excited, that means you've done something pretty special. Well, the bottom line is we're having fun, man. We want to come out here and work as hard as we could and try to have fun. And we know it's a short period of time that we had to really uh, to, to try to get the plays down and work on uh, Rudy's system. But when we get out here and, and causing turnovers and playing great defense, we get in transition. You know, anything can happen. We really open it up for ourselves. You know, we we'll get some um, some high percentage baskets. Now, at halftime, Rudy sort of chuckled. He said he didn't hear what you guys were saying to each other. But I know right. you guys well enough to know that you guys challenged each other's Most pride definitely. or whatever, and the defense came out. It was a much different second half. Well, we wanted to, at halftime, we got into each other's faces and just said, look, let our defense dictate the game. We're going to score points, but let our defense dictate uh, the game and stop our opponent. You know, we wanted to get in the habit of that because we got a lot of quickness, got a lot of versatile players. We got long arms. We cover a lot of space out there, you know, so we wanted to go out there and put a lot of pressure on the ball, get them to uh, just capitalize off, off, uh, off of our opponent's mistakes and just go from there. Alonzo, what do you find the most impressive aspect of this team so far through the first week? Just the co overall camaraderie, you know, that we've developed in such a short period of time. You know, it was one of the things I was really looking forward to, you know, not just, I mean, I'm looking forward to um, playing in the Olympics and um, winning a gold medal, but um, just getting to know my colleagues a whole lot better. I mean, we compete on on a different level uh, during the course of the year and you know, on competitive basis you know this gives us an opportunity to get to know each other a little bit better at the same time um, you can see the unselfishness so unselfishness out there I mean, we're, out, we're out there just having a, having a lot of fun you know we know we're gonna get our best work against each other in practice I mean you watch practices you know we get our best work then and um, well, all we got to do is let our defense dictate the outcome in the game and uh, we'll have no problems out there Alonzo, congratulations. Okay, thanks for thanks stopping by and uh, give our best to your wife as she okay. continues getting ready for the Thank child you. number two. Hey, baby, how you doing? Alonzo <laughs> uh, <laughs> Morning in the United States. The Olympic team winning easily over the college select team here on the University of Hawaii. More to come after this timeout. There's a moment in every race. In every game. In every 60 minutes. When you can either quit, fold, or say to yourself, I can do this. Best way to cure athlete's foot. Here in Honolulu, the United States, getting a big performance from Antonio McDice. At two blocks, a team high, eight rebounds and 11 points, and he's standing by with Craig Sager. Well, Antonio, what's the reaction in the locker room? Everybody uh, talking about Vince's spectacular highlight show? Yeah, um, I think KG up in there on him, somebody need a haircut and half man, half nappy, but you know, everybody excited because, I mean, uh, he was a half man, half amazing. <laughs> he definitely stole the show of the highlights, but Doug Collins pointed out that you turned the game around. They had a chance to cut it down to four with the two blocks. It was defense that may get overlooked. Yeah, I know, um, you know, in the whole game, we, we were just running against these baskets, and, uh, you know, I sat down to the 
under the basket. The guy came in a couple times, kind of swiped the shot, trying to intimidate him, to get him a little scared, and let him come in there nervous the next time. But, you know, I think, uh, you know, that kind of got everybody up flow going and uh, kind of got them up, up flow and just start playing defense. <clears throat> What's the reaction in Quitman, Mississippi, to you being named to the Olympic team? Oh, uh, man, it's, it, they are uh, much surprised than I am. I think I took up the whole four pages when I got with one newspaper. I took up the whole four pages in the whole time. <laughs> All right, keep, keep the press going. That's Let's right. go back now to Mike and Doug. <laughs> All right, Craig, Antonio McDice, a very humble young man. Uh, plays very well once again for the United States as our final score here in Hawaii. The Olympic Team 111 and the College Select All-Stars 74. Next Saturday at 12.30 p.m. Eastern, USA Basketball continues when the men travel to Melbourne for a pre-Olympic showdown against Australia. And coming up next, in most time zones, the high-flying action continues when NBC presents the Saturday night movie Drop Zone, starring Wesley Snipes. That's all coming up tonight on NBC. So for Doug Collins, Craig Sager, and our entire crew, this is Mike Green saying so long from Hawaii.